This past Monday, Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference kicked off in style. This was the first year that WWDC was in an all-new online format, and there were some concerns whether Apple will be able to pull this off. Well, Apple absolutely nailed it. Everything was perfect, including production and drone work. It was so good that Apple is being requested to continue the same format in the future as well. As expected, we got our first look at next versions of Apple software, including iOS, iPad OS, Watch OS, TV OS, and even Mac OS. We have a lot of interesting stuff to go through, so let me tell you. Hello everyone. Welcome to Let Me Tech. I'm your host Sufyan, and today we are going to have our first look at the latest and greatest Android. No, no, it's iOS. Latest and greatest iOS 14. I know we are uploading this video a bit late, but trust me, we'll make up for it in the upcoming follow-up iOS 14 videos. Not only that, we will also cover iPad OS 14, Watch OS 7, the new updates to the Home app, and especially Mac OS very soon. To catch those videos, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon. This year, Apple did a couple of un-Apple things. First of all, they brought some features from the newer iPhone models to the older models. Secondly, they brought some discontinued and removed features back in Mac OS. Anyways, we will discuss this in our upcoming videos, so stay tuned. Before starting with iOS 14, here are a few important things to note. First of all, as mentioned in the title, Android and iOS have never been closer. Both these operating systems have a lot of overlapping features and attributes along with some of their own stuff. Secondly, as we predicted back in April that iOS 14 will support all the devices that support iOS 13, that is true. Not only that, iPad OS 14 also supports all the iPads that supported iPad OS 13. This means that iPad mini 4 has 7 years of software support, whereas iPhone 6 has a 6 years of software support. iPhone 6s has 2GB of RAM and it can still run the latest and greatest iOS 14. This is truly remarkable. Apple at its best. Another thing that is astonishing is the stability of iOS 14 developer beta 1. No sudden reboots, no major app crashes and no app compatibility issues. It does not feel like a beta at all. It feels more stable than the final version of iOS 13 and Android 10. That being said, next beta could be less stable than the current beta. So if you want to install, install at your own risk. With all that out of the way, let's talk about iOS 14. We will also compare this with the iOS 14 wishlist. So make sure to watch this till the end iOS 14 brought some gigantic changes to the home screen. First of all, we got a brand new app library which is pinned at the end of your home screen. It is hard to argue that this is not inspired by Android. As you can see, iOS 14 automatically sorts the app in different categories. As of now, you have no way to move one app from one category to the other or to rename the category itself. The only thing you get is a search bar where you can search your applications or scroll through them quickly. With the app library, you probably don't need all pages of your home screen and that is why you have the ability to hide them. To do that, put your phone into jiggle mode, click on the dots below, you can see all your home screen pages here. Select the ones you want, you need to have at least one. Once you have made the selection, click done, done to move out of jiggle mode and that's it. This is really nice. As you have probably already seen, iOS 14 finally brought widgets to home screen. This is something iOS users have been asking for a while now. Android users are making fun on the internet that Android has had this since 2008 and Apple copied it from Android. Well, that is not true. Let me share something with you. Here is Steve Jobs demoing widgets back in 2005 when Android was not even a thing. And in particular, I want to focus in on these dashboard widgets. So these are just a few of the over 400 uh, dashboard widgets that uh, are available now uh, on uh, Tiger that you can go get. I'll leave a link for this along with the social media in description below. Widgets are not something new to Apple and even iOS has had them for a while. The only thing that you were not able to do were to add them to the home screen, which with iOS 14 you can finally do. So saying Apple copied widgets from Android is not 100% true. Anyways, for iOS users, this is good news. I find iOS widgets to be much more cooler than the Android widgets. Let me share my reasons. First of all, these widgets support dark mode. Secondly, you have multiple size widgets available. Last, you have a smart widget option where you can have multiple widgets stacked. These widgets automatically change during the day. Like for example, they show you weather in the morning, 
calendar during the day and activity in the evening this is really good and this is our favorite widget let's talk about picture in picture mode this is something android has had for a long time a couple of years back it got introduced for the max and finally it has made its way to ios you can just scroll and video will go into picture in picture mode you can resize the window you can move it around and it works perfectly i cannot wait for youtube and netflix to add this into their app as that would be absolutely amazing apple also fixed some of the annoying and obtrusive things in ios 14 which are very welcome incoming call now does not take up full screen nice just like that siri also got a redesign which is absolutely stunning siri also got 20 times more facts added into its knowledge base Theoretically, now it should be able to answer better and you should hear less of this. I found this on the web. A brand new Translate app is also here. It has support for almost a dozen major languages and the best part is it can work offline as well. It also has a built-in conversation mode as well. Safari in iOS got some updates as well. It got a new feature which is tracking prevention and you can see a list of all the trackers that Safari has prevented you from. Another feature that Safari got is translation. This is only available in America and Canada. Why? Because... I don't know. I really hope that in the future, this limitation gets removed. Message app also got some nice updates. First of all, now you can pin your important conversations at the top. Group conversations were heavily focused. You can now assign an image to the group conversation. Right here. Not only that, there are a couple of more changes in group conversation as well. You can now also tag or mention others in a group conversation. Let me mention Umar here as well. Here we go. The person who is mentioned will get a notification letting them know that they have been mentioned in the conversation. Inline reply is also a very cool addition. You can reply to a specific text and keep track of multiple conversations in the group at the same time. Three new memojis and new memoji styles including a face mask were also added in iOS 14. Apple Maps got some new updates as well. First of all, Apple Maps is coming to UK, Ireland and Canada. Not only that, cycling and EV routing are also added in Apple Maps. Apple added a couple of very nice privacy features as well. First of all, if an app is using your microphone, you will get an orange indicator at the top. Similarly, if your camera is being accessed, you get a green indicator. Apple is definitely trying to avoid the misuse of microphone and camera, which can be used to track you. CarPlay got wallpaper option along with three new app types. Parking, EV charging, and quick food ordering. Car keys, which were heavily rumored, also got introduced that allow you to unlock your car via NFC. You can also share keys with your friends. Another very important thing Apple did not mention on stage is that you will be able to change your default browser and mail app. I would have loved to see more options, but hey, it's a start. The last big thing Apple introduced is App Clips. These are a version or part of your application which is less than 10 MBs and can be executed with NFC or Safari links without the need of installing the whole application. You can make payments via Apple Pay using App Clips or order food and such basic tasks. We'll have to wait and see what developers do with this feature. That is all for today for our first look at iOS 14. We will definitely do a deep dive in iOS 14 and bring that video soon. For now, stay tuned as we have our first iPad OS 14 video coming up tomorrow. As promised, let's have a look at our iOS 14 wishlist, which we mentioned in our previous video. You can find the link for it in the description below. As you can see, many of the things we requested are already done by Apple in iOS 14. It is very good to see that Apple is taking iOS in the right direction. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do leave a big thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for the upcoming iPad OS video tomorrow. Until then, Peace.